let me let me describe the dumbest job on the planet to you. Okay, <laughs> your job, your job, Mike, is to um, communicate with strangers via uh, phone numbers that uh, have no caller ID or emails that could be faked. Good buddy, uh, someone that I uh, absolutely uh, think the world of. Um, he's an instructor up in Inland Empire. Uh, Mike Pattengill, how are you, my friend? Good, sir. How are you? Good, 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 good. How are, how is your? I know you had at least one class this weekend. How did it go? Yeah, it's good. Um, things are going well. We're we're uh, had a lot of privates and and then and, and then a couple classes this weekend. Keeping busy, just like Alicia. Can't hey, keep Mike. Up with her, though. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Dave. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And of course, you're with uh, Personal Protection Academy, which is Riverside. But uh, you're Riverside and San Bernardino, basically both, right? Well, we're we're kind of all over Southern California. We we do CCWs in San Diego. We do CCWs in Riverside uh, when the California DOG allows us to. Um, we do classes in San Diego, classes in Riverside. So we're kind of all over the area. Okay, good. All right, excellent. Okay, so that brings us to the gun show on March second and third. You're actually going to be doing in person classes at the show, right? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Talk about that. What kind of classes and. Uh, uh, well, let's start there. What kind of classes are you going to do at the uh, gun show? Well, um, first and foremost, we, we're going to um, do an array of classes brought to you by um, uh, my, my beautiful wife, Erin uh, Pettengill, a registered nurse, master's in public health education. Um, uh, she served as a registered nurse in, in uh, jungles. She served in disaster response areas. She's going to be leading a bunch of medical-related classes uh, that we're going to be offering there at the gun show. The, the concept in an overall um, uh, viewpoint is that what we're doing is if we're, if Alicia and I are training you how to put holes in people, then you really better know how to plug holes in people um, because those holes might be in your adversary. They might be in you, um, but it's, it's something that you need to be able to do as someone who's a CCW holder, uh, you have a gun in your home. Um, so we're offering a couple classes in the medical uh, field. Some of them are uh, the first. Well, the first one is uh, CPR. Uh, my wife's going to lead you through a CPR um, class, and you're actually going to get an American Red Cross certification in CPR. Oh, nice! Uh, she's going to actually be, she's going to teach a, a CPR class, and you can actually yeah. get certified. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, she's got, she's a rock star, and she's going to take care. Staying of Staying alive, and, right? Not anymore. Absolutely. They don't do that yeah. anymore. That's, that's not the well, current. Rhythm. That's not the current rate. Oh, it changes. It changes about every six weeks, I yeah. think. Oh, what's, is there um, a new song? There's a new one that I use. I'm an, I'm a, I'm a CPR. <laughs> yeah, but I I have yet to meet your wife, Mike, but I think we're going to get along really well. Uh, the current one that I use is going to be the Imperial Death March. <laughs> dun, dun, so it's a little dun, faster. Staying alive was a little dun, slower. Dun. Yeah. Is it really? I'm going to have to. I'm going to play them both side by side and see. I would have thought that uh, staying alive was a little faster. I'm doing in a God of Davida. <laughs> The drum solo? <laughs> yeah, the drum solo. <laughs> that sucker will be up and running in no if, time. If you take Dave's CPR class, he just plays the 20 minute. <laughs> I think that's enough to kill somebody, not nah. keep him alive, Dave. No, nah, I'm soft. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. So you're going to take a CPR class? <laughs> Dave, you might need it. Look at that red face. I thought that was a good one. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So you're going to do a CPR class. Your wife is, but that's awesome. And you're actually going to get to be uh, uh, CPR certified through, is it, is it Red Cross? Yeah, it's American Red Cross. If you take our class, I think Dave's uh, class is sponsored through uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, Hey, I think it would work. We'll actually, we, I don't know what Dave can get you, but we'll actually get you a two year certification. So that's awesome. So, um, so oh, wait, wait, wait. So you can do, yeah, so you can go to the gun show, take her class. How long, how long is the CPR certification class? Uh, it's just, just less than an hour. You take a one hour class and you're CPR certified at the gun. That's awesome, man. Yeah, mine's shorter than that. That's great. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool. Okay. All right. So CPR. And then what all, what other kind of classes are you going to, are you, are you offering? Also in the medical world, we're going to talk about uh, Stop the Bleed. If you're not uh, familiar with Stop the Bleed, it's kind of the newest hot thing when it comes to, to gun owners and, uh, and uh, a basic medical training. Uh, in short, uh, a one-hour class is going to get you a lifetime certification with Stop the Bleed. And, and really what that focuses in on is um, 
uh, pressure, uh, plugging the hole, and tourniquets. And we're going to work uh, get you all uh, uh, certified in that. Nice. And then the last. You know what I learned before we go on to stop the bleed? You know what I learned about stop the bleed, which is kind of interesting. I have a, I kind of have a, a very distant connection. Um, so stop the bleed. Uh, it started. It was an initiative by a guy in the Navy who was a SEAL, but he was also a physician. He was a medical doctor. And he did a lot of research. Um, and one of the things he wanted to do is he basically wanted to, he was trying to figure out like, okay, when people are on the battlefield, why do they actually die? Mm-hmm. And then uh, what can we do? Like what's the most effective thing we can, we can do to, to help them stop dying? And this stop the bleed uh, came of that. And uh, he, it's, he's retired now. He retired as a, as a Navy captain. Uh, his name's uh, Dr. Frank Butler, and he did a bunch of really cool research um, on rebreathers and all kinds of stuff. At one point, he was like climbing Mount Everest to do research on eyes. Really an amazing guy. Wow. And the reason I know that is when I was a kid, he was my family doctor. What? <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. He served with my dad when my dad was in the Navy. They were both doing diving research. And when I uh, faked uh, illness or pretended to be sick because I didn't want to go to school, <laughs> he'd haul me into the Navy base, and uh, Dr. Butler would uh, do a bunch of uh, quote-unquote tests on me, and then he'd see right through me, and he'd go, you know, uh, Dr. Schwartz, I think you should probably keep him home for one day. And But tomorrow you're going to school, right, Mike? Yeah, I'll go to school tomorrow. Okay, anyway, so I I, uh, I didn't I just found out that connection, and I think uh, you know, Mike. I think it'd be kind of interesting. I want to get him on the show and interview him and talk uh, about how he came to you know the conclusions uh, because stop the bleed, like you said, is like the latest greatest thing. I mean, everyone's talking yeah. about it. It's it's that. Yeah, you know, it, the- it, it- Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Lisa. I was just going to say, you know, the, the traditional CPR is fantastic. It's great and it has a place and it's really important. But the 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 bleed care that's taught at that level is is more. It's at to a lesser degree. Your stop the bleed is more of a traumatic a traumatic bleed um, scenario, and it it's a different situation. Well, they're kind of both related. They are. Well, they absolutely right? are. I mean, right. if if uh, basically uh, that red liquid, otherwise known as life. <laughs> If it's not flowing through you, then you're it's not out, uh, yeah. you're you're done. So it's either if it's flowing out of you, you got to stop the bleed. Mm-hmm. If it's if it's if it's all in you, but it's not moving, then you got to that's it. Start the heart. Yep. Yeah, you can. The average person can can uh, absolutely bleed to death in sixty seconds. Yep. And so Jeez. if the person standing next to them, hopefully not the person that put the hole in them, but if the person standing next to them can stop that from occurring, then you're saving a life. That's it. That's amazing. Okay, so and what's the third one? What's the third class you're going to be teaching? In the in the medical uh, subcategory, we're looking at how to build a medical kit. Oh, wow. And so um, our gun guys are are on the range with uh, projectiles that shoot anywhere between 950 feet per second and 3,000 feet per second, and um, they should have the basic necessities. And so we're going to give you the basics on how to build um, a large med kit. So if you're out in the backwoods hunting or doing something where you're a day or so away from EMTs, this is going to give you what you need. We're going to help you uh, learn how to build a medium-sized med kit and a small med kit, which is going to be known more commonly as an IFAC or an individual first aid kit. Um, And it's going to give you all kinds of a a spectrum of uh, of what to use. And I'm telling you, I, I teach all this stuff. But my wife is the one you want to take this, these classes from because she's lived this stuff, man. How do, talk about that. What is uh, talk about your wife's background? Like, how did she obtain the knowledge to uh, learn how to uh, or to know how to build her own med kit? Well, um, in in short, she started off as a as a prison nurse right out of college, and so um, you know you've got lacerations and, and gang fights inside the prison. She went from there to pediatric oncology. Um, and did that for about 10 years. Then we went overseas for about 10 years. Jeez, wait, wait, wait. She was, wait, wait, wait. She was yeah, yeah, yeah. in a prison and then pediatric oncology. I mean, gosh, just taking all the easy gigs. Yeah, Goodness. Yeah, right. It's, it, it's, she's, she's the most sensitive person you've ever met. She's, she's got, had some of the crappiest jobs on the planet. Oh. And then, okay, so then what? Then you guys went overseas? Then, yeah, we went overseas for 10 years where we lived in uh, two different uh, developing countries, uh, one in Africa, one in Latin America. And she did everything. Uh, I'm glad this isn't being, being broadcast because if the California Nurses Association heard about this, they'd be upset. But she delivered babies. She, she performed minor surgeries. She amputated 
uh, uh, body parts. Uh, she did all kinds of amazing stuff and then uh, came back to the States now where she's a, a dialysis nurse. And uh, she's, she also, she's, she's done a lot of disaster response training. She went to Sri Lanka after the tsunami. She went to Haiti after one of their earthquakes, done some astonishing stuff. And so literally, God bless people like me who are, who are certified to do this stuff, but uh, are just dumb gun instructors. My wife is the one that wants, that you want to take the class from. No kidding, man. She sounds like a superhero. Rock star. Good for her. That is what, what an amazing lady. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So she's going to be there at the, are you, who's teaching the actual class on, uh, at the gun show? Oh, she's teaching those, man. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's cool. I'm looking for, I guess we've met, I've met your wife, right? Yeah. Tall, four inches taller than me, about 50 IQ points higher, <laughs> uh, much, much better looking. I think we've only met like it, like it, like it, like like gun prom though, and there was like no opportunity. It's like, hey, you know, yeah, and then you know, I, I, I <laughs> hopefully at uh, at the gun show, I'll have an opportunity to uh, uh, to talk to her a little bit more because every time I talk to you about her, I learn something even more amazing about her. I mean, gosh, you're like yeah, her, yeah, you're like her, uh, you're like her best hype hype man. I, I am her hype man, man. I, I, I married up, brother, all the way. <laughs> yeah, literally. Sounds like you said five, yeah, what, four sure. inches taller. You literally Four married. inches taller, yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, I think what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to a – we're going to do a break and, and pay some bills, as they say. Right, Dave? Isn't that the old – Absolutely. That's the radio terminology. Yes, it is. And when we get back, uh, we're going to talk even more – to the very awesome Mike Mike Pattengill, and hopefully we're, we're going to talk even more about his wife, who sounds like again sounds like a, sure she sounds like a superhero. I mean, how cool is that? She just sounds amazing. And we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, some skills classes and specialized training, and uh, get you all ready to go so that you can go to the gun show and meet Mike and Mrs. Pettengill, right? And uh, learn. Yep, and you can take my class there as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, Dave's is offered out back by the dumpster. <laughs> I can't. It's not going to take five minutes. We're talking to Mike Pettengill, um, and uh, specifically we're talking about some of the classes uh, that he offers, especially at the gun show. We were just talking about some of the cool medical classes. Our gun show. At our gun show, May wow. 2nd and 3rd. Just go to gunownersradio.com, and you'll learn even more about our gun show. We need you to attend, and there's all kinds of reasons why. So, Mike, uh, I have a note here to talk about skills classes, including dry fire training, drawing from the holster, and handgun mastery. Talk talk a little bit about that. What talk about what what's valuable about dry fire training? Well, so uh, while my wife's doing the the cool medical stuff, I'm going to be doing the gun stuff. So, you come to the gun show and you want to buy guns and you want to learn about guns. You want to learn about Second Amendment activism. Uh, but you know what? Let's fix all those things that uh, that you need help with. Uh, Alicia will attest to this is that if people did more dry fire training, she and I would be out of a job Absolutely. Um, that, that uh, it, it brings tears to my eyes when I actually talk to my students. I'm like, wow, since you were here six weeks ago, you really improved your grouping. What are you doing? And, and, uh, oh, well, I've been dry practicing. Like you told me uh, just 10 minutes a day, three days a week. And you wipe a tear from your eye <laughs> and you said, that that's amazing. So here's what we're going to do. Really, the, the best thing you can do for your ability to shoot is going to be dry fire uh, practice. But it's not it's not that simple. But we're going to give you a bunch of tips, and and it's a it's a class that I normally put on and charge a lot more money than than we're going to be charging at the gun at the gun show, and and we're going to take you from uh, from no tech and low tech to high tech and how to use um, all these options when it comes to perfecting that, that dirty little uh, uh, index finger on your dominant hand. Um, that is the thing that uh, I'll, I will take a, a stab at. Maybe it's uh, as much as 90% of your accuracy is out, of that, is out of that dominant index finger. And if you can't control that, you can't control your shots. And so we're going to work with you on that. Uh, that's, that's amazing. How much? So I don't really. I get it. I've gone through phases where I do dry fire training. Like I wish I was. I wish I could honestly sit here and say, "Oh, I'm consistent. I do it. You know, ten minutes a day for three days a week, or whatever." Mm -hmm. I wish I would. I wish I. I wish I could set that up. Alicia, honestly, how much dry fire training do you do? You do? 
Uh, you know, honestly, I get a lot of dry fire practice when I work with students because I mm. demo and work with them. Yeah. So honestly, that's where a bulk of my dry fire, I admit, I don't do enough of it on my own like I should either. I mean, and it all, shame on me. Well, shame on all of us, right? None <laughs> but, of us are perfect. I mean, you know, we all have, you know, we have mm-hmm. seconds when we shouldn't. We don't go to the gym when we should. And none of us do as much dry training or dry fire training as we, as we should. I, I think honestly, like. Like if a person just says, hey, you know what, before bed, I'm just going to pull from concealment and dry fire, you know, get one shot on target 10 times. Like if they just made that a habit, I mean, what would that, what, what is that, like six and a half minutes of your life? Oh, not even that. You know? Not even that. I think that yeah. something like, don't you think, Mike? I mean, like I know that sometimes when I, I'm like, well, I'm going to dry fire for 45 minutes <laughs> twice a day. You know, seven days a week, and then I no one. I, I don't. You know, I put these unrealistic goals and expectations on myself. But Mike, don't you think? Like, what if someone just says, "Hey, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do five. We're gonna do five draws and presses before bed." You know, don't you think? I mean, that would be a world of help. I, I I take it even make it more simple than that, right? You're about to walk out the door. You you grab your phone. You grab your keys. You grab your purse or your wallet. You grab your firearm. Uh, mag out, round out, rack, 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 point it towards a, a ballistic wall or a chimney or, or a, a fireplace and, and just do five dry presses, do, do two holster draws, uh, get that round back in there, get that mag back in there and walk out the door. Every time you slap your gun on, just do a little bit of dry press. Mm. That is easier. That's way so, easier. A little bit. So that's, bit. I mean, that's, that's, it, it's simple. It's, 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 it's uh, the big bane of most people's existence. It's, uh, you know, for our right handers, it's, it's all about down and left or down straight. Mm-hmm. And for our, 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 our left handers or whatever they would say, right handers down left, uh, our left handers are down right. And, and we could stop that if we just worked on the stupid little index finger. And you know, a lot of people discount dry fire. And I'm sure you heard this too, Mike, is that they discount it because there's not recoil. Well, what they don't realize is that the, all the unnecessary movement that happens all happens before the recoil, just the recoil hides exactly. it. And that's what yep. dry fire works on. So if anybody's poo poo and dry fire, knock it off. Yeah, no. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> no, exactly. she's looking at you, Dave. I know. That's why I'm not looking at her. <laughs> well, but that, because there's no big bang, when you pull, press the trigger, right. they, they, you, you, you I think it, it, it teaches the, uh, it teaches the movement out of you. You know what right. I mean? Like you, your your yeah. movement. You know, you're not worried about a big bang anymore. Now mm-hmm. you know. You can so when, focus on what you need to focus on. Yeah, I think. I yeah. don't know. That's that's what I like to tell myself. I don't know if it's true or not, but <laughs> well, you've got the expert right there on the phone. Just yeah. ask him. What do you say, Mike? Is that am I right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. It's all about dry practice. I'm a, I'm a competitive shooter, and I'll, I'll be dead honest. I don't do just like Alicia says. I don't do as much dry practice as, as I should. But oh. the night before not the night before competition, I'll sure put in 30 minutes. Um, and I, I think that really helps me advance as a competitive shooter. Well, I, ha- I you know, I've seen I've seen real scientific studies where they they took three groups and they said, here, go shoot free throws, you know, for thirty minutes a day for a month. And then they said, uh, you know, group two, don't shoot any free throws for a month. And then group three, just think about it, just for thirty minutes a day, think yeah, it's about a it, mental you know? process. Yeah, it's a and mental, then, you're training your you're training your brain. And the folks that just thought about it, you know, practiced, you know, uh, in their head, uh, did almost as good as the ones that actually practiced. So, I mean, this is very much along the same lines, probably even a a step above that. It's just, uh, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. see more to think about it. Okay. What about the specialized training? I'm seeing here that there's going to be real estate agent safety training. Why should a real estate agent, uh, go to this class? Why should, if you're a real estate agent, maybe you're not necessarily a gun person, uh, but you own a gun. Uh, maybe you don't. Maybe you're thinking about owning a gun. Why would a real estate agent take that class? What's in it for them? Let me let me describe the dumbest job on the planet to you. Okay, <laughs> your job, your job, Mike, is to um, communicate with strangers via uh, phone numbers that uh, have no caller ID or emails that could be faked, and to meet them in places where you know you're going to be alone, they're going to be alone, and there's notoriously nobody else there. That's your job. Your yeah. job is to go to places where there's nobody that's going to be there and you're going to meet a perfect stranger. Yeah. Doesn't that just sound ludicrous? I know. Just you're, you're just broadcast to the entire world. Hey, I'm alone and I'm in a house all by myself. You're a stranger. Come see me. Yeah, exactly. And, and so this, the concept of this is 
Um, listen, you as a real estate agent, if this is something that if this is something that uh, how you pay your your own mortgage, then we just want to give you a couple of ideas to keep yourself safe. That's all. That's awesome. And you're doing something similar for uh, houses of worship, right? Churches, synagogues, et cetera, like their security teams. Yeah. So um, there's there's opportunities to identify public threats, and and that's something that that churches and houses of worship and synagogues can really use. Um, just it, it it doesn't always actually very seldom statistically looks like the guy that uh, everybody thinks it is, which for those of you who know me or can see the horrific uh, uh, picture on the screen, uh, shaved head uh, guys with tattoos, right? It's, yeah. it's very seldom that guy. It's the, it's the, it's the, uh, the sociopath is the one, and, and that's the one we got to look out for. So we're going to teach people how to identify a public threat. How do I identify? Uh, a... also... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I also wanted to, to hit back on the, on the skills classes that we're talking about. We're also going to talk about how to draw from a holster. And that's one thing that I, 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 when I, when I, can, when I uh, certify people with uh, CCWs, that's one thing that I, 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 we're really going to get aggressive in, in the new year about uh, our CCW certification. And that is that uh, uh, you're going to learn how to draw from a holster. Because I talk to people all the time, oh, Mike, you're a firearm instructor. Cool, I've got a CCW. The first question out of my mouth is, when's the last time you drew a live weapon from a holster? Uh, I, I ain't never done that. Um, well, uh, what, so you think the first time you're going to do it is when is when someone's throwing lead at you at 950 feet per second, and uh, you've just soiled your drawers and all the adrenaline's pour, coursing through your veins. That's when you're going to do it right the first time, right? <laughs> and then, uh, and then the next class we're going to do is called handgun mastery. We're going to focus in on kind of the three the three. I think most important things about, about shooting, that's going to be your grip, your trigger press, and your side alignment. You can be laying on your back. You can be laying on your stomach. You can be in a chair. You can be standing. You can be in the weaver, the isosceles. I couldn't care less. Um, but if you don't have good grip, uh, trigger press, and side alignment, you ain't going to hit nothing. I, it, enormously valuable. I think that's really, really great. Although I'm always tempted. Anytime an instructor says, yeah, I'm going to teach you how to draw. I'm always like, really? Like with a pencil or charcoal? Or, <laughs> and they'll go, ha, 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 ha. We laugh and we hug and then we work on shooting. Um, yeah. Okay. So for this, let's talk about the cost. $67 yeah. as an add-on. So if you already have a ticket to the gun show, you've gone to gunownersradio.com and you purchased a, uh, a ticket, you, you, then an additional $67 as an add-on. Um, $80 if you want to buy your gun show ticket and register for the class. So what you want to do, you definitely want to get this stuff in advance because, mm -hmm. uh, space is limited. Um, there, there are going to be thousands of people at this gun show. And Mike's pretty awesome. It's going to fill. Mike is extremely awesome. But what I'm Mike's, saying is. Mike's, Mike's wife is awesome. And just, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, what a love fest we have here. That's it? It's just, yeah. 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 No, wait, I have awesome. a question though. Is this, is this, so there's, there's the skills and there's a the specialized training. Is it one cost for everything or is, or they're separate? How does that So work? there, you, Mike, you talked to us about it. It's you, you purchase them on, online, like you're saying, and that mm -hmm. gets you into one class, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's the dry fire training class and there's the real estate safety class and there's the, uh, yeah, it, it's it's totally separate. Gotcha. So okay. each class. And by the way, totally, it's all that's all spelled out uh, clear as a bell on the website. Go to gunownersradio.com and you can purchase tickets there. Um, but what I'm what I really want to emphasize is don't buy it. Don't just buy a ticket and and attend the show and think that you'll definitely be able to take these classes at the show. You want to be be sure to reserve this in advance. I'd hate for someone to say, "Well, I bought a ticket and I'll just pay for it when I get down there," and then uh, it, it's filled. So, purchase in advance. How to sign up? Well, it's super easy. Go to gunownersradio.com/slash/gunshowclasses. That's gunownersradio.com/slash/gunshowclasses. Pick a class. Click on the Get Tickets button and boom, you're in. And just like Alicia says, what a deal! I know those classes are. are valued much more highly than what we're charging so absolutely, get in. absolutely. thanks mike patton gill appreciate you man you're the best thanks guys thanks for watching this clip from gun owners radio if you're watching mainstream media you're not getting the truth about guns gun owners radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the second amendment fight the fight for your self-defense rights you can watch our live stream on youtube every sunday from 4 to 6 p.m california time or if you're in san diego am 1170 fm 961 the answer we're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.